we're doing. Well, just a brief, brief recap. You know, the goal of the last game was to start fast and finish strong, and I think the coaching staff and the players responded extremely well to that. I think sometimes, you know, attitude and chemistry and identity and personality take a little time to develop. And after three games, I think that, you know, our, our aspirations, our expectations um, are sort of gauging our performance a little bit more rather than something externally to inspire us. And uh, high standards come from uh, passion from within. And uh, I saw a little of that in the last game. And hopefully with the SEC coming up this week, um, you know, we'll continue to build on that. Um, you know, I know we released some players of the week. You know, Greg McElroy, who has been consistently a very good, solid, efficient quarterback at his position and has certainly affected the success of the offense in a very positive way in terms of balances. Uh, offensive player of the week with Colin Peake, who has played well for us and did a good job, especially blocking in this last game. Mark Barron and Terrence Cody are the defensive players, and Terrence was honorable mention in the SEC. And on special teams, Javi had another good day in terms of returns. Robbie Green and Chris Jordan uh, all did an outstanding job in, in special teams. You know, we have a war daddy board, which is kind of a character attitude, how you compete, how you execute. We actually had less mental errors, and um, I think we played with a little bit more passion. Uh, so we had a lot more guys, you know, on that board for this week. Um, from an injury standpoint, Roy and Julio will practice today. Uh, they'll be evaluated day to day. Um, and, you know, Demetrius Goode's probably going to be out for a day or two, uh, possibly can return. Again, he'll be evaluated on a day to day basis, you know, maybe by Wednesday or later in the week with a hyperextended knee, but nothing that's really. Um, an issue or a problem. You know, Arkansas to me is uh, one of the best offensive teams in the country. You know, Bobby Petrino has always been one of the best offensive coaches at wherever he's been or whatever level. Um, they have a great passing game, a very good system. Um, now with a quarterback, Ryan Mallett, who um, leads the nation in passing efficiency, uh, is obviously a guy that can execute and do it very well. Um, but he also has some very good players around him. Um, they got a couple running backs, you know, Michael Smith and Dennis Johnson, who are really good players. I think they have three receivers that are in a top ten in the SEC in terms of receptions. Uh, they have very good tight end. Uh, their offensive line plays extremely well uh, in their system. You know, defensively, they got nine starters back and ten of the top tacklers from a year ago, and all four guys up front. And um, I, I think are a much better defensive team uh, and will continue to, to be a much better defensive team. And uh, they've got team speed, uh, so their special teams show it. Um, they're one of the top teams in the country in kickoff return. So, you know, this is a, a really good football team, um, especially uh, an outstanding offensive team, but a really good team overall and going to be very challenging for us. And, um, We'll have to, it's a little different than what we played against to this point. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of challenges here, and we'll see how we respond to it. Coach Saban, particularly if, if Roy is available to come back this week, you'll, you'll have probably not too crowded, but a crowded situation at running back. Is your philosophy to say we're going to play this guy this many series, this guy this many series, or do you go more by, by feel in a game in, in terms of, Mark, Roy, Trent, et cetera. Well, I, I, I basically, you know, sort of get a feeling when the game's going on. We usually say we're going to have a guy carry the ball three or four times, and the next guy is going to go in and carry it three or four times. And, um, and then maybe you have a guy that's assigned to a specific role, whether it's third down or whatever. And uh, sort of from that scenario, you kind of get a feel for who has the hot hand. Uh, or who maybe is um, the guy that's rolling out there like you'd like to see it, and maybe that guy plays a little bit more and uh, than the other guys in that particular game. So, you know, really, it's evaluate him and see who's got the feel. And and just as a follow up, has Trent sort of 
increased his presence over these two games where, where you give him an earlier shot or when you know, he didn't play very much in the first game, but has he kind of worked his way up a little bit? Yeah, we've played him more and more in the last two games. And, of course, you know, he's had an opportunity. He's taken advantage of it. And I think he's proven that he deserves to have a role on our team. Um, and I think he's done extremely well to this point. But, um, you talked after the game the other day about sacks not being very important to evaluate a defense, but what about takeaways? That you, You're ranked second in the nation in rushing defense, third overall, but you haven't had that many takeaways yet. Well, and that's something that we need to improve on. I think um, turnover ratio is very, very important. Um, I think it's something that we continue to emphasize with our players. Uh, we got a lot of the same players that we had last year when we got a significant amount of takeaways. So, um, you know, I think we got to keep working at it, keep emphasizing it, and um, I think the day will come that we, we, we get some of those. And uh, I think if you're being aggressive and tackling well uh, and gang tackling, uh, putting some pressure and affecting the quarterback, that you're going to get opportunities to make turnovers. Um, it's been something that we've emphasized and we haven't done. We've done a really good job offensively of not turning the ball over. Uh, so that's something that we need to improve on. There's no question about that. Coach, when you're facing an offense that's a prolific passing offense, does it still start with stopping the run or is there ever an exception? I guess, in other words, as a defensive coach, would, would you still rather them have it a throw to try to beat you? No. Um, you know, when they get five times more yards throwing than they do running, you got to adapt and play a little bit more coverage, um, you know, and take away, try to take away what they do best. Now, I don't think you can, you know, I think there's a balance in all that. Uh, I don't think you can compromise and just not be sound against the run, not have all the gaps because they have two good runners now. And if you do that, they're going to come out the gate on you and they're good space players and, um, so, you know, I, th I think you've got to play the situations in the game, but I also do think that you have to emphasize coverage uh, and be able to play the passes, especially so that you don't give up big plays. And um, I think, you know, the, the last game they played, you know, both sides were lots of big plays. And, you know, if you give up big plays, now, there's a lot of stats in the NFL that talks about how many explosive plays in every drive. And, you know, if you get one, the chance of scoring goes up big time. If you get two, it almost doubles again. So, you know, when you give up those big plays, just like they scored once on us, they had two big plays in the drive. And I don't care who was out there playing. It's you can't give them up. Uh, and it's going to be important for us to continue to get explosive plays, uh, but not to give them up. And you do have to play a little bit different. Um, you know, you can't play rundown defenses when you think the team's going to throw it. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Eric Anders um, and how he's able to overcome being, I guess, less than typical size at the Jack linebacker position. What, what does he? What are the skills he has that, that helps him overcome that? Well, he runs extremely well. He's got very good initial quickness. Uh, he's been in the system now for a while and really knows what's expected of him. And uh, even though he's not a guy in stature I think he plays a little bit bigger than he is in terms of he's got pretty good power and pretty good strength holds the point pretty well plays with leverage so and he adds something to us in terms of speed and pass rush ability which is um, important especially in games like this I know you touched on it a little bit before but how does Arkansas's offensive strategy their just base uh, game plan change uh, from the other two, three opponents you played? Well, I mean, they they're, they got a pro-style offense. Um, see, how can I sort of categorize it a little bit? And, um, you know, they're very good play-action game. Um, they run the ball enough to be effective running team to make you respect their run. Uh, they take what you you give them in terms of if you play a middle of the field coverage and the corner's off, they're going to throw the ball outside. And if you get up and press them and have middle of the field coverage, you're going to try to throw it over your head. Uh, if you play split safety coverage, they're going to run the ball more. 
Uh, maybe try to beat you with misdirection, play action pass, get somebody out of position. Um, they have a well conceived pro style offensive scheme. And um, even though they have thrown the ball extremely effectively, they still have some balance in what they do. I mean, they still run the ball for 100 yards a game, which would be the goal of most pro teams, but um, they just really lit it up throwing it. Um, and I think they're very, very dangerous when it comes to, you know, making big plays and in the passing game. And I think that's something that um, we have not seen. I mean, we play two teams that are a little bit more run-oriented, option-oriented, zone read, zone dive, spread kind of oriented. Um, one team who would sling it around pretty good, um, but. Not totally a pro style team, but more similar. Coach, I know the the way it works with with red shirts. Coaches have to pretty much decide, for the most part, pretty early which freshmen are going to be the ones to contribute right away. When, when you're making that decision and you have to make it so quickly, what are you most looking for? I guess beyond terms of just physical ability, when deciding which guys you're going to try to go with early. Well, I, I think a couple things. I think, first of all, the player shows that he can be responsible to do a job uh, on the team more effectively than somebody else. Because um, we want to play the best players, and we're never going to try to redshirt anybody that can play better than somebody that's playing. So, I mean, that's first and foremost. Um, and I've talked about this quite a bit before. With freshmen, sometimes it comes down to maturity. It doesn't mean a guy's not going to be a really, really, really good player at some point in time in the future. It just means that maybe he's not quite ready to do that right now for whatever reasons. Um, and so we don't really decide early on that we're going to redshirt guys. Um, we coach our guys as much as we can and try to continue to develop them. And I think that there's a lot of factors that come into whether you're redshirt a guy or not. We want to continue to develop players um, so that if we lose somebody, maybe somebody that we thought we might be able to redshirt, all of a sudden that guy becomes the next guy that can provide a winning performance at his position so he gets elevated to play. I think guys that clearly beat someone out and show that they're a better player. You put them in there and you play them. And we've done that with several guys this year. Um, and there's some other guys that may still get an opportunity to play. So we haven't made any final decisions on anyone. We've given ourselves the opportunity to redshirt some players because we haven't played them to this point. And also, I just wanted to ask about the offensive line to this point. Through three games, are you pretty comfortable with what you've seen from that group heading into SEC play? Well, you know, we obviously have done a pretty good job offensively. I think they've done a, a pretty good job, and they've improved, you know, each week. Um, I don't think we're the same type of offensive line we were a year ago, but for what this offensive line does, uh, they've been very functional, played extremely well, played with a lot of toughness, play hard, play smart, um, and have – Done a, done a good job for us. I think it's going to be important that we continue to improve and develop in those areas, uh, not, not just in the starters, but also in the people who are behind uh, those guys who got a you know, significant amount of playing time in the last game, and uh, I think that will be very, very beneficial to their development. Coach, uh, talk about the differences in how you'd scheme for a quarterback like Ryan Mallett as opposed to a, a player like Tyrod Taylor or Tim Tebow. Well, you, you know, I think both guys are, are unique athletes in terms of what they're gifted at. And, um, you know, Tyrod Taylor was an extremely good athlete who was a, um, a, a, a good passer but could really beat you with his feet and um, his ability to run when things broke down. So it was really important to try to keep him in front 
um, almost make sure that he didn't run, um, where I think that when you play a guy that's a pro style, I'm going to call him a pro style quarterback who has very good arm talent and very good understanding of what they're doing and is going to get the ball out of his hand in the right place, um, you need to affect him with the skies, with different coverages, with um, different ways to pressure. Uh, and obviously it's most critical to be able to rush three and four guys and get some pressure to make the ball come out um, on time so he can hold it and let you get extended down the field. So um, I don't want to say it's opposite, but in some ways uh, it is very different. Coach, with uh, Julio missing the last couple games, how important was it that the other receivers saw opportunity, got the chance, and did thrive in that situation? Well, I think that it's always been you know, our goal to – get more people involved in the passing game, have some other options in the passing game. And uh, I even think in the first game when Julio played, uh, there were some other guys that made really big plays in the game. Um, I think that it's Im probably important for our team in terms of other receivers to continue to develop. I think what's happened at this point has probably helped their confidence. Um, and the chemistry that the quarterback has with those guys is uh, good and I think they have confidence in each other and I think that's a good sign and hopefully we'll be able to continue to have more and more players involved in the passing game. Coach, on, on first down play calling, is there any kind of mix you look for balance-wise going into a game or, or is that dictated by, by who you're playing and how they play you? Well, I think it's probably a combination of both. Um, you know, and it also d depends on the situation in the game. Um, we probably, in both of our last two games, would have thrown the ball, you know, 12, 15 times more in the game than maybe what we did uh, had we been in a game that we weren't ahead in. So as much as you want to say we want to continue to work and run our offense, I think Sometimes when you get a little ahead in the game, you don't maybe throw it as much, especially if you're having success running it. Um, but we want to have balance in our offense, not really in terms of numbers of running plays versus numbers of passing plays, but really in production relative to what the other team's doing. Um, they're in a lot of eight-man fronts. We probably ought to be throwing the ball a little bit more. Um, if they're playing a lot of split safeties because um, they, they want to try to cover you, then you probably ought to be running it a little bit more. So part of it is taking what they give you. Um, we've always felt like it was real important here to be able to run the ball and also be able to stop the run on defense and create positive down and distance situations. Um, but there, there's more ways to create positive down and distant situations than just to run it. And I think you have to have that kind of balance in the passing game to keep any defense off balance. Uh, Coach, you kind of touched on this a few minutes ago with Mallet, but how, how well has your front seven or six and that front line especially been able to kind of affect quarterbacks without quarter blitzes and all that stuff? And how big a key is that against this kind of offense? Well, I think it's a, a big key. Um, I don't think you can commit people to uh, extra rushers all the time to try to get pressure on a quarterback to affect a quarterback um, because you're going to be thinner in the back end in terms of your coverage. So, you know, to be able to get pressure with four guys rushing is really important. Um, I didn't think we did a very good job of that last year in the game that we played last year against them. Um, and I think it's going to be really important that we can do that in this particular game. So um, I think having good pressures is also important. I think having coverages, and I think doing multiples of things that change it up a little bit. You know, playing defense is a lot like being a pitcher. 
you know, if you're a one-pitch guy, they're probably eventually going to hit you. I mean, even if you got good blitzes and you blitz all the time, eventually, you know, you're going to live by the sword and die by the sword. Um, but if you got a good change up and you can throw a slider on the outside and, you know, I saw this guy the other day, they're talking about all he does is throw a fastball up in the strike zone and a change up down in the strike zone and the guy's winning lots of games. I forget the guy's name or who he pitches for, but, I mean, and playing defense is, especially when you're playing against a really good quarterback, is, you know, a lot like that. I think if he knows what you're doing all the time before he gets the ball in his hand, um, he's going to be able to make a good decision and take advantage of it. So you got to be able to pitch a little bit. Thanks, Coach. All right.